So you, you know you mentioned the, the shirt I'm wearing today and if, if you don't watch the show on television and if you're just listening as a podcast, obviously you won't know it's the Inter Milan 99-2000 shirt with a son Ronaldo number nine in the back. Yeah. And this is only a pure tribute to Brazilian Ronaldo, of course, a genius of his own, but also because he's the idol of Karim Benzema and Karim Benzema growing up wanted to be Ronaldo, wanted to be like Ronaldo. And and he still says now, Karim, that he's no, nowhere near as good as Ronaldo ever was. But but I just I'm just amazed, even knowing him well, that he can produce moments of magic like he did on Wednesday, two back to back hat tricks in the Champions League. Only Ronaldo, Messi and Luis Adriano against Bate Borisov, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, After, I know, I know, but you know, right. so really it, it counts because <laughs> there's Bate always Borisov the day that doesn't quite fit. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's pretty much only the two aliens and, and Benzema then. Uh, and the way he took those two headers, maybe the second one even more than the first one. The first one is sheer power, really, from where the ball comes from Vinicius. The second one is all about the finesse, all about the germ, all about the intelligence. And and I was thinking during the game on Wednesday, like, OK, what other players, Gab, would have, would have reached his best level? And we're talking one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world right now. So late in his career, at 34, what kind yeah. of other players? It's almost peak. Players who are so better late. in their 30s than in their 20s, yeah. right? Yeah, so not mid-30s just... even. He's not like 30, 30, 31. Yeah. 30, he's 34, he turned 34 in December. It's, a, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting debate because um, you know, there are examples of players who are, you know, Messi and Cristiano were really good in their 20s and really good in yeah, their 30s true. and, you know, whatever. Um, in Benzema's case... Uh, I mean, the ones that come to mind are are people like Toto Di Natale, yeah. you know, who scored, and Quagliarella, yeah. these guys who had very long careers. Uh, Teddy Sheringham, I think you could certainly argue, you know, possibly better in his 30s. Became a slightly yeah, different yeah. sort of player. Ibra as well, to a certain extent. We should ask him. We should get him on the show and yeah. ask him. Um, yeah, Ibra possibly. Because with Ibra, is a bit different. Because Ibra, I think it was also, there's a sense of mat a maturity yeah. came in. Yeah. What makes this slightly different is those other guys that we mentioned in their 30s, you know, they, they had the combination of the experience and they were technically exceptional, mm -hmm. right? So you don't lose your individual no. technique if and you're the a top intelligence, yeah. footballer. And you have the intelligence and then you get that extra experience and the team plays for you and whatever. Yeah. With Benzema, I'm really struck by how the athletic side of the game is still such a big part. Mm. Because the way he pops up in in different areas, right? We, I mean, we we talked about Vinicius down the left and Valverde down the right, kind of Valverde often becoming the fourth midfielder and so on. So there were times when Benzema was a right winger. There were times when Benzema becomes a number ten. Yeah. There were times when Benzema goes over with Vinicius and overlaps. So that kind of incessant movement and work rate, which has always been a hallmark of his career, you know, back when he was working for Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. and Jeff Bale. And that's, that's still there. And I don't know physically whether he's just a freak of nature that he can continue doing that. Do, 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 do yeah, you see what I'm yeah, saying? Really. So, I think the big key here is the athleticism and how he's done all this invisible work to be so fit, fitter than he's ever been, really, in, in what he eats, all the, the, the treatment that he does to recover, to recover his body, to rest his body. All of that is incredible. And... The talent was always there. It's, it's what we're trying to say to people. Even in a Cristiano team, even when he was younger at Lyon. And by the way, his first ever Champions League goal was back in December '05 against Rosenborg with Lyon. And 16 years later, or 17 years later, he's still scoring in the Champions League, like 80th, 81st, 82nd goals or whatever, which is incredible. But you're right. The, the, deep, the big difference is the mentality now, in the sense that he had the responsibility when Cristiano left, especially to become the leader of the team, and he's delivered that. And then this incredible fitness and, and athleticism that was there before, but not to this point. I mean, since when has he become Zamorano in the air? Like, how, how did that happen at 34 years of age? And if you look at him, he's, he's a player with almost three players in it. He's got that heading ability now of a Zamorano. He's got this incredible technical ability almost of, his, of his Zidane and the awareness and the number 10 role that he can have. And then the finishing is incredible. So 
I, I don't know. I'm lost for words now. I've, it's, I don't even know what kind of adjective I can use. See, like, well, look, we've talked about it before. I, I would love to see an intelligent, well-reported piece by people mm. who talk to a lot of people who can, who can explain this, who can understand it, because it's not just the goals tally, right? You can say, oh, look, but he played with Cristiano, so he had to play for Cristiano, and that's why he didn't score as many goals. All the years that he played with Cristiano, he says, oh, Benzema, blue collar, he worked so hard for Cristiano, yeah. for Gareth, blah, blah, blah. Sure, if he took more penalties, he would have scored more goals, duh. But it's more to it than that. Like, he is a more decisive player today as well. And, and I look at all the managers he's had, and we didn't see it. And I know the Mourinho haters mm -hmm. who love to point out, you know, Mo Salah, Kevin De Bruyne, arguably the two best players in the Premier League, yep. right? sent away by, yeah. by Jose Mourinho, but also Benzema. Remember the whole, like, Benzema yeah. Higuain, he preferred Cats, Higuain, he said, yeah. and then Higuain gets injured, and he's like, oh, I wanted to go hunting with a dog. Now Higuain is injured, so I got to go hunting with a cat. I don't know if cat in, like, Portuguese lingo is some <laughs> lame-o. Like, yeah, you know, they're, like, not you know. aggressive enough. Or whatever. Uh, whatever. Some cats are very aggressive, yeah. you know. Um, but look, I... And I know people will pin this on Jose, but you can't pin it on Jose because so many others also said, oh, yeah, look, Benzema. Oh, yeah, he's, you know, he's good for doing the running for Cristiano. He's good for opening space for Cristiano. Yeah. You know, he's kind of like the bass player in the band who nobody ever, who makes it work, but isn't the star. Yeah, you don't notice. But he is a star. But he's a superstar. He's always been. And like he said in the interview we, we did in October, he said, but Cristiano was in the team. Like, he, the guy scores 60 goals, 70 goals a season. Of course, of course, this is his team. You know, it's not, well, it's, it's not Karim Benzema's team or Luka Modric's team or Gareth Bale's team. This is Cristiano's team. So you do, you do what you think is right for the team. And if that means helping Cristiano to score 70 goals when you score 32, like in the 11-12 season, then you do it. But he was never... It was never a case, certainly not in Karim's head, of like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice myself. For, it was not like that. He was just playing his game. And his game at that time, in that period of his life, and certainly at club level, was like, okay, how can I help my team winning? I want to win Champions League. So if I score two goals today, we might not win the Champions League. But if I help and the team by putting Cristiano in the best environment, if I do my bit, if I score my goal, but also give an assist or two, then we're gonna win the Champions League. So of course I'm gonna choose that. And, but it was never a case of, oh, the guy is not good enough, or he's underrated, or he's, you know, he's, he's undervalued. The talent was always there. It was just also down to the environment around him and the team around him. I, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with it. I think the, how do I help my team win, you're still seeing it even today, right? So now, what you're saying is now Cristiano's gone, so the way you help your team win is scoring goals as well as continuing to be unselfish mm. and so on because yeah. there's an altruism to him. There's a reason he, he has all those assists. You know, I mean, I don't want to have a pop at Vinicius here, but especially seeing him in person, he is kind of a one... He does one thing yeah. very, very well. Yeah. And maybe he'll grow into somebody who does more, but... So much of it is he and Benzema having this understanding about when he runs, where he runs, where Benzema is. I think what has helped Vinicius tremendously is he's developed the experience now and the awareness of, of Benzema in terms of how he yeah, angles his run, in terms of how he moves. Goal. Yeah. Um, and the other one too, the, the one where, where, where Vinicius, uh, the, the one which ends up hitting the, 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 the crossbar. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, which I think, I wasn't sure if it had been deflected, was it deflected or not. But, yeah, I think um, it was. Uh, but Benzema is... 34, 37 goals in 36 matches in all competition this season, or 38. His expected goals is 28, I think. So the 28 goals that he scored, that you expect, and there's another 10 that he should not have scored. Right. Like, like the second header, for example, or maybe even the first header, which I think is remarkable. I, I've said it before, there was a time where I said Kylian was the best player in the world and Karim was a close second. I think right now it could be the other way around. Karim is the best player in the world and Kylian is a close second. I'm glad they're both French. And I, I could not care less if you think one is better than the other, one is the best player in the world right now. What I know is that there's a big, big chance now that Karim, if he continues like this, wins the Ballon d'Or and it would be well deserved.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.